On February 23rd, 2022, Win Companies held a Zoom meeting designed to present its newest iteration of the housing development at Warden Square. Residents of Warden Square, neighbors, and other concerned citizens offered their reactions to the proposal. The scale of this, the 96 units, is really overcrowding people. The quality of life, I believe, will not be great. I am all for affordable housing. I live in one. I own one. But I ha actually haven't seen the city do a lot to support us. I think that uh, 96 families moving in is just going to decrease the quality of life for everybody. Time and time again, you keep presenting these site plans and you talk a lot about these wonderful improvements to the common spaces on the site. You speak of gateways. I just don't see it. The site plan doesn't look very good at all, quite honestly, as somebody who has an architectural training. I usually walk my daughter to and from daycare um, on the other side of Danahe Park. Currently, the path, it's like very open to all sides. I, I guess maybe it just feels safer. I don't know that I would feel personally comfortable walking on the north side of the building just because you're kind of blocked off from view of anyone else. This is a very important pathway, both for vehicles and for pedestrians, because it's such an important link with Danahe Park, not just the residents at Walden Square, but for the whole neighborhood. And actually, it's an important social space where people meet and mix and mingle. Building A continues to be this gigantic obstacle that's been plopped down right in the middle of that pathway. And so when I look at what's being proposed along the north edge of Building A, that's not a pathway. Far from being perfect, it's actually, in all honesty, it's very poor. And when we get to the northwest corner of this building, bang, we're right into parking spaces. You have actually destroyed the pathway. This is not good enough. You know what I mean? I live on Bolton Street, and there's 13 affordable housing units already here. We own them. They're condos. I own my condo. I live in an affordable housing unit. And they were all built with just one parking space. Most families have two cars. And I don't like to hear this talk about low-income people, oh, we can ride our bikes, or we don't really need parking spaces. We do need parking spaces. Why are you allowed to build you know, apartments without enough parking spaces? Just because we're low-income? On my street, which is a dead-end street, there's not enough parking here already. People from your new development, Walden 2, they're going to end up parking here, and they're going to be parking on all the other streets, and it's going to create issues for the poor people who live in Walden Square. Their parking spaces are probably going to be filled up by the 96 families that are going to be moving in there. Do you need to build 96 units to make a profit? Can you build like half of that and still make a profit? How big of a profit do you need to be making to, to be doing this? You know, in the history of public housing, we see that there's a two-part equation. And, and one part is, is sort of architectural at the front end and what gets built. And then the second part, of course, is management and how the buildings are managed and maintained over time and the quality of life for the people that live in these affordable housing units. 